Hello and welcome to Dance Teachers Academy. I am your host, Jose on the mic, and with me is the lovely, amazing dancer, Ume. How are you doing? I am fantastic. All We're right. In beautiful San Diego. We are uh, in beautiful San Diego, uh, Champions beautiful. Ballroom. Tony Redpath. Lovely uh, lady, Tony Redpath here, who needs no introduction, so we're going to get right into this. Girl, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Thanks yep. for inviting me. Thank you for Have being fun. here. All yes. right. Thank, no, I know you're busy, so I appreciate you uh, taking time out of your schedule. We Please are going to be okay. short on time because, <laughs> right. yeah, she's actually in between, uh, in between teaching. Lessons. She's yeah, in between lessons. She's in between lessons. Finish when I'm busy. Yeah, boom. Be back out there, again. there you go. So. Uh, what's going on here in your town? I mean, we, we just, we left, uh, Orange County. Yeah. Come down here to see you. We got yeah. busy doing some stuff over there. So I wanted to catch up to see what you have going on here, uh, on yeah, your well, side I'm of the woods. I'm a little bit of a hermit. I kind of stay in San Diego as much as possible. One, it's a gorgeous town. I'm yeah, originally yeah. It's a beautiful from a town, town. I love in, this place. Um, Australia called Surface Paradise. So I grew up for the first 15 years in Australia. So I was born in sunshine and, you know, surface paradise. So mm -hmm. I like, grew up with swimming and oh, wow. water skiing and surfing. And sure. Yeah, so then um, my dancing career took me all over the world. To I lived in Norway for a few years, in England for a few years. And then uh, one day my mom had moved over here with my stepdad, Ray Rivers, uh, to San Diego. And uh, on one of my visits, I came over here and I was like, oh, it's so sunny. I had had <laughs> enough of European winters oh yeah yes. and at the time i was thinking gosh this is career suicide moving to san diego you know you wouldn't think of it being of a hub of ballroom dancing right but actually at the time when i, I came to visit them it was when rick valenzuela was dancing oh, yes. with melissa dexter yes. ron um champion ballroom was open with including ron montez mm -hmm. wendy johnson mm -hmm. mary murphy like there was just this look at you dropping names <laughs> seriously it was like i walked in and i'm like this is the dancing scene in San Diego. This is rocket, like Tony Meredith, Melanie yes. LaPatton. I know. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and then just totally up the road in up L.A. Yes. was um, Heather Smith with Victor Barassi. Yes. So I was thinking, gosh, it's sunny. And it's, you know, it's gorgeous. my family's here. It's gorgeous. And there's this awesome kicking dance scene going on here. I'm staying. I'm <laughs> staying. You can't get me out of here. So the Surface Paradise girl was thrilled because I could get my sunny weather. And then the sure. dancer in me was thrilled because there was just this barrage of amazing talent around me. And I felt like the opposite of career suicide. It was like the rebirth. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. The opposite of career And you are, uh, come from a dancing family. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. My um, I started... It, come from a dancing, I got kind of married into a dancing family. Um, my mom married my dance teacher. So, <laughs> but he was my dance teacher when I was eight years old. Uh -huh. So I feel like I grew up with him okay. and with his okay. kids. We all like danced together when we were younger. Um, mom and Ray eventually married when I was 15, 16. Um, so I had already been with him for eight years before they got married. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I was very lucky with that. Having somebody of Ray's stature, his knowledge, his incredible energy and wisdom, you know, growing up from when you're eight years old under that tutelage. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then because he had traveled the world and been a competitor and, you know, he was friends with a lot of the coaches that I went to overseas, you know, I might not have had that door. Yes. You know, That's a very good point, getting, yes. You know, those lessons, like I got lessons from Walter Laird, uh -huh. you know, from Alan and Hazel, from Shirley Ballas. Yes. You know, from Michael yeah. and Vicky Barr, you know, from Gleaves. The, all of yeah. this happened. Dance royalty. My dad would, you know, stepdad would call and yeah. say, you know, I'd like to book a lesson. And because he was calling, it's like I got the lesson, I feel like. Right. So <laughs> I had his tutelage and then I had this doorway into amazing coaching when I was very young. So I was very lucky. Wow, yeah, that, that just, that's just really cool. Yeah, yeah. super lucky. Are yeah. you yeah. kidding? Well, you definitely named like a who's who of yeah. ballroom, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I've always known, I mean, I've you know seen you in different situations and competition. Um, people talk about you, my students who go to your dance camps, and you have a very um, wonderful air of humility about you, though, and you've had all these opportunities. How do you feel an act? <laughs> <laughs> totally She's not humble. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay we're, we're done with the interview. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she, Secret. She just dropped the mic. We're done. No, no, no. I've been brought, I grew up, like, also, I grew up not good. Like, I was not the talented one. I had to work really, really hard. Wow. I was lucky because I got a lot of great coaching, but I needed it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. not, I was not the naturally talented one at all. I had a pretty good work ethic. Yes. And um, I That'll get you lucky, a long way. Yeah, and lucky situations, but I had to work really hard for everything that I got. You know, I'm physically strong, but I'm not naturally flexible and not naturally fast, so wow, all of that had to be like amazing. trained in for sure. Wow. Yeah, so I think I'm 
humble and just grateful because mm -hmm. I feel like I got a lot of lucky breaks to get the most out of myself. There you we go. We talk about mm -hmm. that a lot too, though, in Dance Teachers Academy, but you, that people just really have worked hard to get to that level, mm -hmm. right? Oh, and yeah. Because yeah, my older sister was like the ballerina, mm -hmm. and her leg could go up to mm -hmm. here, and mine was like barely yeah, here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and I was Not like. the terror I, muscle. I started uh, teaching, I started in a training class mm -hmm. at 15. I was the only one left. They still weren't going to hire me because right. I was bad. You know? <laughs> I just like kept. Sticking around, they're like, oh, okay, yeah. she won't leave. Yeah, we may as well hire her. She's going to stick around. Yeah, so this is Get the cat a litter box, it's not yeah. going away. Yeah. So, so strong work ethic. Um, what about, what do you think one of the biggest challenges you've had in your career? And how um, Dancing-wise, uh, there's, I feel like, two big challenges. One's when I was dancing was, like, self-confidence. Getting because when I grew up in Australia, it was um, I was dancing at the same time as Jason Gilkerson, the creator of Burn the Floor. Wow! Yeah, and so he was like a legend and a god in our country. Yes. And there was also some other massive talent like Paul Green. Um, you know, many dancers in Australia. It was like really a golden age back then. And uh, so Paul Wilson, like loads of them. There was I can't even start naming them all. And so I was looking around at all of these people that were really, really brilliant. <laughs> we just lost the lights. We just lost okay. the lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then, um, uh, do you want to put the lights back on? Or yeah, we're happy good. with this cozy yeah, lighting. I know, it just okay, like, nice. Keep going. It's good, nice. Yeah, it's a good thing I <laughs> yeah, still have mine up. Way back when, and the yeah. dark lights go dark. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and now back to the future. I'm so confused was, right now. Yeah, we were just getting into the mood. Music. Yeah. <laughs> so. Break out the Barry White. Um, <laughs> is I was intimidated. Like, I loved watching all of these people, but I was intimidated by their skills. And I never, I thought, gosh, I'm never going to be that good. Wow. And also, as I was growing up, it, you know, I, because there were so many brilliant, they were all Blackpool finalists. So yes. I was always in the bottom of the pack of these finals, thinking, like, there's no way I'm going to be better than these people. Mm. Right. Mm. However, I love dancing and really enjoyed it, and yeah. so I wanted to do it. And then constantly through my career, I always felt like, you know, I was at the bottom of a pack of, like, some amazing dancers. So I, I'm not humble. I was just, like, realistic. It's like, I'm, not <laughs> as good. I'm just not as good okay, as you, these people. And it's geographical take... vernacular, okay. Right. So then when I moved to America and started dancing with Michael, I still had that mindset. And Michael kind of calls it an amateur mindset. You know, mm. it's just like... Well, I'm pack, happy dancing, love my dancing, liked the lifestyle, enjoyed the friendships, but I didn't take it really seriously professionally enough, and I didn't have self-confidence. Uh, so he started changing my mindset. We got a sports psychologist uh, who made us very professional. Like, we, he was Olympic. He worked with Olympic teams, small teams, like ice skaters, bobsled, yes. or luge, you know, where it was, like, just two-person teams, very close, confined spaces. So he was an expert mm. on how to get the best out of yourselves, how to structure practice. So changing into a true professional was one part, and then Michael had massive belief in me. And that was really, like... Huh? <laughs> it, he saw something in you, you didn't. Yeah, he really did. And so all of a sudden having somebody have more confidence in me than I had in myself and pushing me to become more professional and respectful of myself, of him, of the dancing, something started changing. And then I started having more belief and seeing myself as not like bottom of the pack. It's like, mm, I could actually do this really well. Yeah. So that was like, but it took me 16 years. Yes. Like from eight to 24 I was definitely not in that place. So the challenge was like making that switch sure, into being in. a true elite professional. And I think so many people would be surprised hearing that from you because mm -hmm. I always think, Tony Redpath, mm -hmm. wow, she's so great. Mm -mm. Even the kangaroos notice her. <laughs> <laughs> It was stage. It wasn't stage. <laughs> wasn't it cool? No, yes. Yeah. She had Go this little Facebook. video. Yeah. yeah. Where the, uh, it was funny because someone commented, someone, the kangaroo said, wow, that's Tony totally <laughs> No, the kangaroo was like, should I kick her ass? <laughs> that's actually what it is. So probably, I just love probably what was going on. Yeah. about that because uh, no one would, um, mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people would know that because um, you worked really hard. You're a beautiful dancer. Thank you. Yeah, very beautiful. Wonderful instructor. I really enjoy it. The instruction. I was watching yes. you, by the way. She is. Uh, you move like a cat out there. So, Thank you. Yes. You really so, do. I Thank love you. the honesty of that. Right. You just weren't. You didn't feel that way. Mm -mm, no. As I say, 16 years, and it took a partner to believe in me. So I will say this: if there was a message, if you've, if you're struggling with your confidence, don't be dancing with somebody who makes you believe that you're oh. no good. No, no good. You know that's really hard. It's so I respect. 
partnerships where you can see that they're not giving each other positive energy and they still manage to get the best out of themselves. Mm -hmm. But I would make a really big message of if you can't figure out a way to be positive with each other, mm -hmm. go and get help. Go and get a sports psychologist to train you how to be professional nice. and respectful sure. so that you can become the most elite, best version of yourself. That's actually a pretty because good it, nugget yeah, right because there. Because it doesn't happen by accident. No. None of this happens by accident. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything is like really hard work. Yeah, it's that you just you're not born with it at all. Or not for me. Yes, definitely, definitely not, not for me. Yes. Yeah, no, and I yeah. would say there's maybe a two percent in the world, one percent that might be born with it, and even then they still need to be trained on how to be professional. Right. Yeah. Because they're it's happen. like, oh yeah, I can do this. So they're not they don't have the work yeah. ethic. Mm -mm. Yeah. They just don't have the work ethic. Yeah. Oh. So that was probably the biggest challenge for me. I love like that. Like changing message. from an amateur to a professional. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That so. is actually a damn good nugget. <laughs> yeah, Very good. You. I know. Yeah. So I want to remember mm -hmm. to talk about your competition coming in. Thank you. Talk about the other challenge in my life. It's like <laughs> fitting it all in. Like, so now it's like life is awesome. It's amazing. We've got so many incredible projects going on. So the second challenge is finding enough time to do everything properly. Oh, um, time management now becomes an issue. Time management, yeah. And I feel like going through our professional career and having the sports psychologist who would like break everything down into bite-sized chunks like achieve this this week get better at this this week and then like have that solid and then do the next week so it was like oh. a really big part of our learning mm -hmm. process is like don't skip skip the simple stages yes so now in life it's like okay we have so many fun amazing brilliant opportunities to expand smooth globally to build this yes. competition to like you know create to help guide smooth syllabus wise in a new direction. So there's all of these fun projects. So it's like, okay, we don't want to do any of them half fast. So we yes. have to like sure. kind of break things down into bite, bite sized chunks so that we can do them properly. So yeah, nobody eats an elephant full bore. Yeah, you got it, honey. <laughs> bite sized chunks, bite sized chunks. Yeah, you eat so, that um, elephant a bite at a time. It's nice because you caught me at a time of year where I'm like, it just got through a massive wave of a lot of projects. Yes. And now it's like fun because I feel like, okay, now I can really focus on Beach Bash and give it 110%. And I love that comp. It's my baby. I love the yeah. water skiing. Oh, gosh, that took so many <laughs> takes timing the shark getting us you know yeah, Were that you up, really? yes michael doesn't want i can't <laughs> lie but michael doesn't want me to say it was photoshop so yes that's it was true we were skiing there was a shark jumping behind us yeah. <laughs> damn animals they just never yeah, 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 right. no, they it, never jump it, when it you want them to some, yeah i know and then he would miss then he would like bite us and i like stop biting us <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Make was, up. We have so much fun putting our, our promo stuff together. I always say our business meetings just consist of a notepad and a bottle of wine. You know? Hey, that's you a good kind of meeting, earn. right? And you then can the get next a lot of company. Company. Kind of look, Yeah, I know. We wake up and we're like, that's a business plan. Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, that works. <laughs> that's doable. Yeah. That is so funny. Well, what are the just, dates of that? Uh, the dates are the 10th to the 14th of April mm -hmm. in San Diego. We are at the Hilton San Diego Resort and Spa. It's like this gorgeous hotel down on the water um, near SeaWorld. It's uh, kind of central to a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's so fun there. If anyone's old school dancer like me, it totally reminds me of how the Fontainebleau was. I it, love the Fontainebleau. Right. Oh my gosh, when they left the fountain, but it was it's like... It's never been the same again, right? right? Yes, Sorry, for the wait. United States Championship. <laughs> I love USDC. Yes, oh, yes we love... Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great ideas. Yeah. No, love the USDC, Fountain but that time, yes. talk about golden age again. Yes. So there's the pool and there's the fountain, like there's, you know, all of the kids' stuff and this beach right there. Yes, beautiful. So I feel like our comp is like a throwback... We I'll get back and, there. Yeah, we're trying to make it, like, dancing is fun, right? It's Remember, supposed to be. Yes. Dancing is fun. I grew up in a beach town yes. where everything's like super laid back. You're on the beach, then you're like, you know, you got sand in your togs, and you go on like, then you go <laughs> dance, right? So this is totally a gritty fun. moment. It's, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we'll just talk about it later. So it's definitely a throwback event where I feel like it's how dancing was for me when I grew up. Where you go in the ballroom, you're laughing, you're hanging out with your friends, and you're like, hey, I'm just going to do the cha-cha, I'll be back in a sec. Right. Exactly. Do the cha-cha, and because you're calling. so happy, like you dance really well, and then you come back and you like do a little sand sculpture, and then you hang out with the cruise directors, and then you get a massage, and then you go out and you do your rumba, <laughs> and you're so relaxed and having such a good time, and then like on your off time, you can go down and play some beach volleyball or go by the pool 
that everyone says it's actually a really intense competition hour. This makes we, sense to me now. We have huge numbers of entries, mm -hmm. and like our even our men's scholarship is a full semi final. Wow. Our open um, scholarship was like a quarter final. Our pro events was one of our pro events was a first round. Wow. Like it's wow. a huge, really intense, high level event. But it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel intense. Yes, it just feels super fun. Everyone's having a great time, and that to me, it makes me feel like I'm home, or I've brought a little bit of Australia. Sure, and how it mm. felt like when I was growing up, like into America and into pro -am dancing and into comp here. So I'm, I'm really proud of what we've done with that event. Sounds like fun. Wow. It, it, it's, put that on the calendar. I mean, yeah, I mean, put, 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 put it on your calendar. You're gonna yeah. have a good time. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it here. Yeah, you're gonna have a great Look, time. If you don't have a good time in San Diego, there's something just seriously wrong right? with you. Right? This comp just fits into the vibe of the place. Beachy town, lots of fun things around, outdoorsy. Yeah, we just bring that Beautiful weather the all board. the time. Yeah, we have like on the LED screen, we, we had like last year the Borum was at like an aquarium. It felt like you were dancing inside That's a fun. coral reef. And then on the nice. LED screen, there was sunrises and sunsets. And then on the tables, it's like, you know, got the sand sculpting trays and like everyone's got like shark fin costumes on. So it just feels like you're, we just bring the outdoors into the there ballroom. There may be some wine involved. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not saying yes, I'm not saying no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just saying maybe. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying maybe. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like a great time. Yeah. 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 And, and, and this is one thing we would like to talk about a lot, you know, about, Dancing should always be fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the professionals, for the amateurs, we always should try to bring that to our students. The performance side. I get it that the technique. There's a structured side to dancing. Uh, I always like to say that I love watching dancing, but watching somebody who's technically right without artistry is like, ugh. or watching someone trying to be artistic without technique is like, ugh. But having that balance, having structure and technique and discipline. And then balancing it with the fun and the freedom mm -hmm. and sure. the artistry. Beautiful. It's like, you know, you need to have a little the bit artistry, of The artistry, yes. Yeah. It's got to be elegant like, still. Gotta, it's it's just got to fulfill both things. Right. So when I'm teaching, I try and find, like, structure time. And then it's like, okay, you've been disciplined. Like, now let's play. Yeah. yeah. Let's, like, enjoy it. Let's, nice. like, take sure. advantage of all of that. So same thing with Beach Bash. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background. A lot of like we have a great team. It's actually super disciplined behind the scenes. Uh -huh. Everyone knows their role. Everything's very scheduled. It might look like mayhem and madness in the ballroom, but it's totally scheduled mayhem and madness. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of thought that went into it. Yeah. Into the, to the madness. Orga yeah. Organized yeah. chaos is what it's called. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, and it's like you're saying, it, it's a big comp. Yeah. Everything's all you know, top drawer. But it feels laid back. Yes. The only reason that happens is because you have the good people behind the scenes out here. Seriously, our team is that are, amazing. That's uh, they're sitting there uh, making it happen. Absolutely, they make it look easy. Exactly, good people make it look easy, right? That's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yes, that's life. That's dance. That's so comp. Yeah, that's everything. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, it's like if you've done the hard yards and like know what you're meant to be doing. Sure. Yeah. And I feel like I have the best team in the world, just behind the scenes, but also with Michael and Jonathan. They're two best, you know, married to one of them, so he's obviously fabulous. <laughs> the other one's been a, um, you know, best friend of ours for over 20 years. Yes. You know, we know each other so well, and we all really know our individual roles. We know what our strengths are. Like, Jonathan, don't tell him, but he's really great with people, and he's a wonderful person. Ah, oh, that hurt to say. <laughs> yeah, right. Michael is But we have it on film now. Yeah, boo. Okay. Okay, well, we can't air this now. <laughs> yeah. Edit. Such a yeah, edit. Edit. <laughs> yeah, so Jonathan's wonderful with people, so he takes care of all of our staff. He's the liaison nice. with the hotel. He takes care of all of our judges, our vendors. Michael is one of the smartest people I know. So anything with a cord, anything with a cord, that's my honey. He, yeah, all right, you got one too. Smart. <laughs> yeah, it's like Michael does all of our graphics. He does all of our entries. He does all of the ticketing. Wow. He's self-trained. Everything or anything that you see in our marketing, Michael does all of those graphics, and he's all self-trained. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not saying that our poster was photoshopped, but if it was, Michael might have had something to do with it. Right. But it totally wasn't. It was totally yeah. just a photo taken. Right, right. right? Perfectly <laughs> timed. I'm telling you on that, right? Yeah. I love it. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care how you do it. I like it. <laughs> and then um, uh, I'm very much like the visual. So, you know, the marketing campaigns, like the ballroom decor, the trophies, the awards, you know, the certificates, yeah. the customer service. Mm -hmm. all sure. That. So, mm -hmm. so we just know our roles. And we just let each other get on with each of our roles. And That's we like important. kind of, as I say, we'll have our business plan that we kind of like can get together and 
bring some wine and come up with like, hey, we should do this, and then we just let the person take care of it. Nice. Yeah. So it's, it's nice that you can. Like well, yeah, it's nice you have a group that does. That. Oh, seriously, dude, so good. Love it. I'm like, seriously. Like, yeah, it's like, oh, thank goodness, I don't have to do anything on the computer, <laughs> literally, because I can't. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. If it's That's dancing, it if it's yeah, pretty. Yeah. Afterwards, yeah. we're gonna edit the show. When I say we. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be, I'll be taking care of it. Yeah, let's not. Yeah. I don't, I'm not supposed to say this, but uh, she's rather proud of herself. Uh, what is it? A couple of weeks ago, she yeah. actually rebooted her computer By on her own. Shut up! On her myself. own. What? You're going to have to show me how to do that. I won't yeah. tell you how Scandalous. I do it. Yeah. It's like, don't tell me. I yeah. can do it. I say that all the time to Michael. I'm like, I can do this. And then, yeah. We call me the village like, idiot. Yeah, there's no way. They just, if ever they want to test something, they're like, here, see if you can break this. <laughs> no, nope, it must be fine. Yep. She's been at it half hour. It still works. She hasn't ruined it yet. You're yep. brilliant at other you things. Get, I'm good at everything, right? There we go. There we go. Okay. All right, well, young lady, I know that you're very busy. And I, lessons, I, we appreciate Yeah, we appreciate so you. Uh, uh, having, uh, first of all, enjoy, you know, inviting us here. This is right. Uh, yeah, well, absolutely. welcome to Champion Borum. It's yeah. been my home for almost 30 years. Wow. Because I was 15 when I first came over to San Diego. That doesn't make me 45. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. And then Champion was just opening. And so 30 years later. This is an amazing I'm, space. I yes. mean, uh, awesome, right? You've yeah, got a lot room. of room here. We've got this small studio. We've got the studio back here. It's like, I think, one of the best facilities in all of like the West Coast of America, if not all of America. Yeah. Very blessed to have this space. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, thanks, Mary. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's nice to have competition size floor. Oh, yeah. that's another yeah, one. We need teaching smooth. I want to talk to Mary Murphy. Yeah, yeah. Got to cool. get her behind here, get her story. Right? Yeah. That ought to be cool. Yeah. Well, turn the volume down because she might laugh when the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll you put want a, it. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah put, just like mute button. Yeah, I'll just, just, I'll just clip it back here. I'll, I'll just ride the slide here. And I'll really do. Yeah, she I starts love getting animated. in the studio. It's like all of a sudden the energy in the ballroom just goes up like 10 on the Richter scale. Yeah. yeah, there you go. All right, well, Tony, thank you for having us out, and thank, thank you for being here with us. Thank you. Thanks thank you, Tony. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay, yeah. the lovely MA, thank you Thank as you, well. Jose. We're going to go in and enjoy uh, this uh, beautiful San Diego weather. So, folks, this has been another episode of Dance Teachers Academy. Thank you for watching.